for prizes. So again, thanks so much for joining us. And I will bring up the first slides for Tina LeBlanc and I'll introduce her from Sharp Canada. Tina, go ahead. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Jeremy. And thanks so much for everyone uh, spending some time with us over lunch today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be running through some of the um, high level features that Dynabook has to offer. Um, so diving right into the presentation, and again, just to extend the housekeeping, um, my friend Jeremy here is going to be driving the presentation, and uh, we weren't able to get the video going, so I might have to indicate when we're moving from slide to slide, so I apologize in the beginning for that. So I think one thing that the pandemic has shown us is that the work from anywhere trend uh, is definitely not something that we're going to see go away at any point soon. Um, speaking from experience, Sharp Canada has actually got employees back in the office now in a hybrid sort of form. So we're in the office two days a week, and then we can optionally work from home or wherever we can set up for the day uh, three days a week, which has been really nice. Um, so what we're seeing is businesses are looking for long term solutions on the laptop side um, that are both portable and obviously durable with that commuting back and forth from, you know, maybe an office to a home office. Another trend that we've seen through COVID is a lot of businesses trying to restructure and do more with less, um, just sort of staying on top of profitability and trying to recover from the pandemic. So that's really put a high strain on the IT department. So something that we bring to the table as well um, in conjunction with the attache group is professional services, um, where we can take the burden off the IT department and really sort of assist with that IT um, uh, rollout on the laptop side. And of course, with, you know, the work from anywhere trend, you definitely want something that uh, uh, is a quality product and you're not going to have any issues with. So the entire Dynabook range comes with a standard three year warranty offering a lot of peace of mind, um, just sort of ensuring that, you know, the products are going to work end to end through the life cycle. So who is Dynabook? Um, although the name Dynabook might not be familiar to North America, um, Dynabook actually came from the Toshiba, Toshiba laptop business. So uh, Sharp Canada or Sharp Corporate, I should say, acquired Toshiba PC back in 2018 that has 35 years of heritage in the PC business. And Dynabook was a name that was actually introduced, as you can see in my picture here on the right hand side, back in 1989. So the first Toshiba Dynabook laptop came into the market space and obviously uh, laptops have come a long way from what you're seeing in the picture there. Um, but again, although it's not a new, a new name uh, to Toshiba, it is something that's new to Canada. So we're doing a lot of um, just sort of uh, information and kind of getting the name out there. Um, so they actually have a lot of industry first that we'll see in the next slide um, with over 165 million laptops sold in the marketplace. So definitely not uh, a newcomer to the laptop scene. So Dynabook, you know, although again, we're working on brand recognition, um, they were really an R&D organization. So a lot of their profits were cycled back into R&D. And because of that, they've got 30 of the world's first laptop innovations that you're seeing here on the life cycle chart. So again, first laptop in the marketplace back in 1985, very proud of that. Um, you know, other highlights like the world's first wireless docking station in 2007, um, quad core HD processor in 2008, getting into the world's thinnest and light, lightest laptop and tablet, uh, and the first to market with uh, 4K. Um, so again, with that commitment to, you know, R&D, um, I think we'll continue to see a lot more innovations to come. So why Dynabook? Um, why Dynabook is that they do all of this stuff in-house. So they have end-to-end -end control over products. So they're the only complete PC manufacturer that not only designs, they develop, they test, they manufacture all of their own components. Um, we've got a custom BIOS and we have some nice things that we can do with that on the security side that you'll see in later slides there. And again, um, the entire range does come with that standard three-year warranty, which really sort of speaks to actually what you're seeing in the slide here um, that we transitioned to all of the testing and R&D that goes into the products. So Dynabook actually sends all of their new families out to the Halt testing facility that you're seeing here. 
And so this is a highly accelerated life testing um, process that simulates three years of usage. And it goes through all kinds of stress tests, you know, things like heat, uh, shock, vibration, um, really to simulate sort of a, a rough usage over a three year time period. If there's any vulnerabilities or issues with the products before they're released out into the marketplace, those get cycled back from the testing facility to data book to re engineer the design and make sure that everything's solid before it gets released to the public. So again, this is really the reason why there's that commitment to, to quality in that, um, that warranty process. These are some of the other in-house testing, um, um, I guess, uh, procedures that go through um, just sort of uh, stress testing the products before they go out to the marketplace. So these are kind of all of the usage tests, um, you know, the stress points on a laptop that you'd see, you know, so things like the pressure points, the palm rest, um, the ports, uh, the hinges. Um, so all of the items that are really used often on a laptop and, are, and can be the weak points, um, these are things that are thoroughly tested before Dynabook puts out new models into the market space. And security is so huge these days. I think it's every other day in the news that we're hearing about another organization that has had you know, their data held hostage. So it's definitely something that's front of mind for end users, for businesses alike. Um, and Dynabook has always put a really um, high focus into security and making that front of mind when they're engineering and designing their products. So having the BIOS as a proprietary BIOS in-house the code is controlled and secured at the factory level by Dynabook BIOS engineers. So the another, another advantage that we have in sort of controlling um, the, the BIOS code is that in-house modifications can be handled versus having to you know, deal with third-party BIOS uh, individuals to get issues resolved. Um, also having sort of that secure code um, that's protected at the factory level, um, we're a lot less susceptible to being hacked. And a different approach that you can see here that Dynabook's taken to engineering their BIOS. So as you can see on the left hand side, this is sort of a, a, an image or um, uh, just sort of a graphical representation of the Dy Dynabook BIOS. So it's a little bit different than what you see out in the market space. There's a separate uh, hardware layer and security engine that's added. Um, making the security data a lot harder to access and hack um, because it's stored on the hardware level versus being stored on the software and operating system level. So again, lots of um, focus on security so you can be sure that the Dynabook laptops are not going to be a weak point in your network. And in the beginning, we talked about taking some of the burden off of the IT department. So this is just a selection of in-house um, uh, configuration services that we can offer. So at the factory level, we can provide imaging services. We have different levels available there. Um, we can take care of asset tagging for you. Um, you know, things like uh, custom logo servicing, both on the outside of the notebook and then also um, on the boot screen as well. Um, so again, we have a selection of these services that we can assist you with and take the burden off the IT department. Um, and we can sort of do all this in-house if necessary. So when you're looking at our lineup of products, we break our laptops down into three families. So we've got the Portages. Um, those are your ultra thin, ultra light executive brand. Um, this is the, uh, um, these are built on a magnesium alloy chassis. So super, super light. It's actually what I'm using. Um, then you've got the Tecra models. So those are your everyday business workhorse models. They have all the bells and whistles that the Portages have to offer. They're just not quite as thin and light. Um, both the Portages and Techers, I should mention as well. Um, we also offer a build to order service. So we can look at whatever spec that you need and then have those customized um, right at the factory level. And then we just introduced back in the spring, the Satellite Pro Series back into the market space. So that's kind of your maximum value um, family. Um, it still has lots of value and, and uh, feature set built into the, um, the family there, but uh, they're set SKUs. And because of that, we actually have those here in Ontario in a local warehouse. So the nice thing about the Satellite Pro, you've got all your basic needs for basic users, um, and they're ready to ship right away. So that's sort of a next day turnaround on those models there. Again, just running through the lineups when you're looking at our naming convention. So, you know, again, the techers are those durable units for users that don't necessarily need, you know, the lightest um, models. 
Um, the other benefit of the Tecra series is that they have all of the required ports built right into the unit. So you've got your RJ45, your full HDMI, um, USB and USB-C ports. Um, so you may not necessarily need to have a docking station to have all of those extras. Uh, you can just set up the Tecras and you're ready to go. Um, different screen size options again, as you can see here. So, um, you know, we've, we've probably got what you need um, in regard to portability and screen size. And just to note, when you're looking at any uh, 50 or 15.6 inch screen, all of the models that uh, Dynabook has to offer on the larger screen sizes have the full numeric keypad as well, which is handy. Then we've got the Portages. Again, these are your executive brand. This is the premium brand. So different options here. Um, uh, Dynabook uses Intel CPUs. Um, so these would be uh, the latest and the greatest shipping with the Tiger Lake 11th gen CPU. Um, and again, Sharp Canada actually went with the Portage models for all of their users. I'm almost at three years with no issues on my, my Portage, my current uh, X series model, and I love it. So um, definitely something to consider. And again, you, we've got the new Satellite Pro series. So we have those both in the 40 or 14 inch and 50, so 15.6 inch screen sizes. Um, and again, these have your 10th generation Intel core processors, the solid state drives, um, and they're actually coming in at a really nice weight considering they're sort of the, the value uh, family of products. And again, we have these in inventory for uh, immediate ship shipping. Something that's brand new um, that we're adding to all of our current lineup is an antimicrobial coating. So obviously, you know, again, as a result of the pandemic, I don't think any of us are looking at sort of those common touch points in the same way that we would have before COVID. Um, so this is just something that um, will help with uh, keeping bacteria um, off of all of the, the touch surfaces on the notebooks. Um, so this is something that's standard um, that will help. And really nice, again, if you're an organization and you have some of those shared workstations where you have users and logging, coming in and logging in on the same device. Um, this is a really nice feature to have. And warranty, we have a full range of warranty options. So we have the standard included three-year warranty. Um, we have a drop ship uh, locator right off of our website. We've got support in French and English that's local um, and all kinds of warranty options from on-site um, to a one-time no questions asked, which I really like, especially with kind of, you know, throwing my laptop into my bag next to my coffee and zipping into the office. Um, so we have a whole selection of warranty options to help you with as well. And that's it. So again, I want to thank everyone um, for joining my portion of the presentation today. We have some exciting presenters coming up and uh, we'll hang out and answer any questions that might have come up through the presentation. Tina, thanks so much for that. Uh, I do have one question for you. Uh, somebody is curious as to whether or not you have thin clients. Um, I'm going to defer that question. I think I've got Dan on the line here, our senior systems engineer. Um, I know this came up recently and I dug into it at that point in time. So I'll let him remark on that. I don't know if he can type into the chat or if he has uh, the mic yep. uh, enabled I'm there, here. but we'll get that question answered for you. Danny there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, That's perfect. Great. So uh, at this moment in Canada, we don't have the thin clients. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Europe might have some. However, uh, in Canada, it's not a product that we have decided to bring in at this at this point. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. No problem. Uh, and if there's any other questions, feel free to put them into the Q and A chat at the top there, or you can also uh, just go in the general chat, and I will be monitoring and. We also have a couple other representatives on the line here with us as well that will be monitoring that chat for you. So thanks again, Tina. So I am going to shift gears over to uh, Jacob at scale. So give me one second here. I'm just gonna reshare my screen. And get out of this one. And Jacob, take it away, please. Nice. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Um, yeah, good to be here with everybody. I sometimes get jealous of things like Tony Robbins' presentation where he has everybody up on screen. So even though I can't see your faces, I'm going to pretend that I can. 
Uh, but glad to be here, excited to give away some prizes and see people walk away with that, plus some really cool content uh, and really appreciate Attaché and all the customers on the line taking time out of the day to allow us to meet with you. Um, I'm from Scale Computing. My name is Jacob Smith. I'm the country manager here in Canada. I'm joined by Chris Shoemaker, who's uh, part of the Team Canada, and we're here to support any reviews of hyperconverged infrastructure. He's actually in the chat there. He just said hi. So if you have questions, throw them out, and I'll address them live during the chat. But we'll jump right to it. So, Jeremy, if you can go forward. So a little bit about me is I've been selling tech for about 10 years. I think everybody on Team Canada has been over decade, decades of work. We're one of the most seasoned teams in the company. I think Canada is an incredible market because 90% of the businesses out there are small, medium businesses. You know, there's one point something million organizations and the majority of them fall under 99 users. Over the last decade, I've personally been able to speak with tons of IT teams. We'll just go back actually. Um, and I've personally sold the traditional approach to architecture. You know, that included VMware, separate server company, storage company, networking company. Uh, you got your virtualization layer. And just on the sales side, it's been so difficult to get all those technologies together pitch it to a customer. I can't imagine what it's like to manage that as an IT person, all those different vendors. You know, I got a glimpse of what that was like, but from the sales side. And then converged infrastructure came out during my tenure and I sold converged infrastructure using Cisco and Pure Storage and NetApp and Nimble and all these really great technologies. It cost a quarter million dollars just to get into that technology. It was really cool, but it also took eight months to deploy it. So this road to hyperconverged infrastructure is something I've witnessed, and it's one of the coolest things in tech that I've been able to see, where the market has been screaming at vendors to take all this money that they're making and really help organizations get an enterprise-grade experience that it's actually affordable and is simple. And that's what scale computing has done, and I'm going to share a little bit about what that journey looks like, what scale is doing in the market. We can go to the next slide. So, you know, when you mix uh, what's driving hyperconverged infrastructure and its success, if you look at Gartner, they've said that 50% of organizations, or, or, or sorry, it'll be a 50% compound annual growth rate of organizations moving away from traditional infrastructure and implementing hyperconverged infrastructure. When you mix that with the reality that 10% of enterprise generated data is happening outside of the data center today. And in 2022, IDC predicts that over 50% will be generated out at the edge. It's painting this clear picture that the benefits of hyperconverged infrastructure, which is the ability to help with making a simple edge architecture, is going to be more and more of a focus for IT organizations and more important for organizations to master. Uh, we can go on to the next slide, but scale does that very simply. Uh, and affordably. So organizations of all kinds have taken the plunge to HCI before, if you haven't implemented HCI in your organization. I just wanted to highlight that public sector, healthcare, you know, manufacturing, logistics, ships in the middle of the ocean, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, these are companies that work with us that have already uh, reviewed their options. They've been in a refresh and taken the plunge to hyperconverged infrastructure. They've chosen scale computing. Uh, for really good reasons, two of them being affordability and simplicity. Uh, we're always happy to get you connected with any organization. And if you happen to work at one of these organizations that are on here, I just want to say thank you. And if you're willing to be a referral, that'd be excellent. But um, yeah, just know that we have a bunch of referrals and are happy to connect you. And we love being a connector of people to like-minded individuals in like organizations to let them speak to you uh, about their journey to, you know, choosing a hyperconverged infrastructure and the benefits it's unleashed in their organization. On to the next slide. So we've seen some pretty cool deployment uh, environments and have a lot to speak to. Uh, I just want to use this as a reference point so that you, you guys can hit us up with questions or ask us about this. But to paint a picture of where we've been deployed, it's it's everything from I was just on a call with a government employee uh, who has, you know, jails and housing communities. Uh, we're working with an organization that's deploying highly available architecture on ships where the, it's way out in the middle of the ocean. There's no IT person there. 
but they need localized servers that can be managed remotely, deployed remotely, are highly available at the edge to deal with things like, what if the internet goes down? What if the internet connectivity is difficult to master and they have latency concerns? They want localized resources there, which we are a perfect fit for. But whether you are a small office, like a dental clinic, you have 50 sites, 10,000 sites, one location, we embed everything that is needed to run your data center anywhere in the world and integrate it back with your central data center or your cloud and give you everything you need to power that private hybrid cloud, servers, storage, virtualization, all in one. Uh, we work really closely with the, the folks at Turnium, which you're gonna hear their message. Uh, I'm in love with their solution. I talk to every customer about it. We partner up on many projects where they're helping with our interconnectivity across many locations. One example is Simcoe County. I know I'm going really fast, but a lot of great content and I'm just passionate about this stuff. So trying to squeeze as much as I can into this conversation is Simcoe County District School Board. I love those guys. Uh, I'm very lucky to have met them. Uh, they were doing a huge review. They're on VMware. And within 10 days of meeting us, they decided to rip out their entire production environment, which was up for refresh, and change it with an all NVMe cluster of scale computing, which gave them, you know, NVMe is five times faster than Flash, and they were able to get that at a price that beat a tiered architecture on VMware. And I asked the IT director, why are you choosing scale computing? And he's like, well, I'm retiring. Uh, VMware is really complicated. Uh, I've hired on some new IT people and I just don't want them to have to deal with the complexity of traditional architecture when I can get higher performance, a lower cost and a better experience overall with what you guys had. Um, so I'm always happy to connect with people like this who have really great perspective on why scale computing is transformational within their organization. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, and I mean, they're running everything on this. So you heard from Dynabook, you got a solution out there that can easily deploy and help you manage a deployment of desktops, laptops, sorry, laptops across, you know, wherever your employees are scattered. And you can merge in a, a, a solution like scale computing, which can sit VDI on top of this private cloud distributed across the globe, if you want to, and send out certain application access to your Dynabook. Uh, it's a great pairing. We're big in the VDI space, uh, but this cluster can do more than just VDI. It does everything, surveillance, uh, all your virtual machines that you would ever run. We get called into ERP implementations. We're still running some people's exchange if they haven't migrated to the cloud yet, but it's an all-in-one data center, no matter where it's distributed across, across the world. Uh, next slide. So what we've done is our company has been in business since uh, for about 12 years now. And it was founded by IT professionals. And they were looking at this traditional infrastructure and said, there's got to be a better way to do this. This is expensive. There's many vendors in here. It's so complicated, uh, complicating for a small business to have to master all these elements of technology. It's no wonder companies were screaming out, I want the cloud, because they wanted to eliminate this complexity from their environments. But the cloud can be expensive too, and it can be quite co uh, complex. So there's a middle ground. And we we asked ourselves, what would we do if we started from scratch? So just click the button here, Jeremy. You'll notice that we took all of the elements of a data center and decided to use hardware that everybody's familiar with, which is servers. You know, we're at Lenovo servers, Dell servers, whatever the case may be, and give VMs direct access to disk, put the virtual layer, disaster recovery, backup, server storage, virtual uh, machines all in a single appliance and make the architecture so resilient that if drives failed, servers sw failed, switches failed, you wouldn't have to worry about that as an IT person. It would take care of itself. You can manage it from anywhere in the world from an HTML5 browser. Uh, most importantly, your data and downtime would be eliminated and it would be simple and affordable. Over to the next screen. So we've also designed uh, some like in our approach to hyperconverged infrastructure where we consolidate everything into a single appliance. We've designed the world's leanest hyperconverged infrastructure software. So on the left, you're looking at our competitors. They've taken the VSA approach to hyperconvergence. And the only problem with a VSA, it's great. I love it. I love HCI in general and I love the competition. The problem with it, though, is it's bulky still. You can find yourself allocating 30 to 100 gigs of RAM per server just to power the VSA. 
And often there's some environments we work with where 30 and 100 gigs is all the RAM they need in the environment. So now they have to double their environment just to power the VSA. And it's also um, requires more cores because a, a VSA requires that. So it could be two to four cores per virtual machine. What we've done is we designed the world's leanest software using in-kernel approach to hyperconverged infrastructure. We're the only ones to do it. And instead of two to four cores, we can run on a fraction of a core. Instead of 30 to 100 gigs of RAM, we can fit on one to four gigs of RAM. So there's a unique benefit that happens from here. If you go to the next slide, is this. Uh, we can fit on some of the world's smallest form factors. So where hyperconverged infrastructure was unattainable for organizations, they'd often say, it's too expensive for me. I, I just don't have the money or the staff to manage something as complex and as expensive as this. We're able to give a hyperconverged infrastructure experience and cluster for 10 to $20,000. You know, so now customers that had the need for a single server are able to buy three servers and have that high availability, which has been great for small businesses, but it's also been great for organizations that have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 sites. And we actually won a project with a whole Dell Hayes. They have uh, 10,000 locations across the globe and they selected scale after looking at 26 different solutions out there. Um, but we scale all the way up to big servers. Uh, I told you we have NVMe based technology in our servers. We have GPUs, we do VDI. We just have run the gamut and we're invested in by investors like De Dell and Lenovo, um, whose chassis we use. We use Supermicro as well, but we give it as an all-in-one appliance. You can go to the next uh, screen here. How am I doing for time, by the way? Uh, I think I might be five You're minutes out. Yeah, you, you're still good. You're good to go. Okay. Um, so this is this slide really helps illustrate uh, one of the things that we're focused on. Uh, you mentioned, you heard me mention uh, the Ternium crew there is you could deploy, uh, some of you might have sites one or two or 10 locations, for example, and whether you're doing a central location and you have a second site that you want disaster recovery on, uh, you could get really creative with our infrastructure and put a single server at one location, uh, three in a single location, have a disaster recovery server somewhere else. And this really just showcases how you can manage everything centrally. We're, uh, our UI is very easy to, to use. It's uh, any HTML5 browser will work. Uh, you can manage a thousand sites on it, uh, 10,000. 20,000. Uh, you can get creative with your deployment. So let's say you need a small active directory or you're running some AI at an edge location. You can deploy a single server out there at the edge and have it interconnect with your data center. But really importantly here is we provide the ability to affordably place highly available architecture anywhere you need it and have it all interconnected and managed remotely. And I've seen some people do some uh, pretty incredible things with this, whether it be government, you know, running SCADA systems, um, and then plugging that back to their main data center or retailers, you know, not having IT people in a retail store. So they have a highly available cluster that they can deploy and manage remotely. Uh, hopefully that paints a picture of some of the creativity you can, you know, do with this type of infrastructure. And it can all integrate with the cloud as well. We'll go to the next slide. So who is scale computing? Just a very fast high level overview is we were formed many years ago by IT people who said there's gotta be a better way. Uh, we were born out of Indianapolis. We have teams all over the world like Chris and myself and our team up in Canada. We have tens of thousands of systems deployed across the world. Um, we are invested in by Lenovo. Uh, we have partnerships with Dell, Intel, uh, Ternium, Eaton, Buffalo, Acronis, just everybody uh, in the vendor community has looked at us and said, you guys are doing something special here. We'd like to participate in this. Um, we actually are one of the first HCI custom, um, companies out there to hit profitability on our product line. So we don't burn $100 million in marketing every quarter. We're out there making a difference, helping companies save money, get more out of their IT spend, and we're growing along with them. So we're here to stay and bringing some really cool vendors along for the journey. You'll notice in the top right, an NPS score of in the 90s. And that just signifies that customers are really happy with their experience with scale, their investment in us, and their willingness to share that with other people. Uh, some of the best organizations in the world have a 50 and 60 rating on that scale. So it's really unique to have a, a number in the 90s. We'll go to the next slide. And we have about 25 patents that protect what we're, do, we're doing in this space. And ultimately, our vision is this. 
We want to make IT very simple. We've made it so that you can manage it simply. You don't need a ton of expertise. Your architecture almost takes care of itself. Uh, by the time servers arrive in your environment, you can unbox them, rack and stack, and be in production ready mode in less than an hour. We give you everything you need, whether you're a small customer or the largest on the planet, uh, disaster recovery, backup, uh, self-healing, automation, all built into the platform. Um, we're scalable, so we can start in the smallest form factor, as you've seen. So buy what you need now. And if you merge or acquire an organization, you can scale up very seamlessly with very little rules or limitations like some of our competition happen to have. And we've been built on affordability. I mean, we were built for the SMB space and slowly made our way into larger organizations based on our affordability component. And I think I'm coming up to the end here. So, um, you know, you can find great reviews. This piece is just a, you know, if you review the video recording here, you're going to know that you can find us all over uh, the internet, Spicework, Tech Validate, Trust Radius, example, et cetera. But the last thing I wanted to leave you with is on this final slide is I definitely urge you to take a no obligation assessment from Attaché. They can analyze your data center. They can look at your workloads, give you a report on what's happening in your environment. And us and the Attaché team can come in and give you a no obligation configuration and review of what it would look like to put hyperconverged infrastructure in your environment, simplify things and save you some money. I appreciate all the time. I, if I went over, I apologize, but feel free to reach out anytime. Jeremy can help us get connected uh, if you have any questions, comments, or interest in learning anymore. Thank you all very much. Jacob, thanks so much for that. That's some great information. And as Jacob touched on a couple of times there, uh, we are more than glad to sit down with you and educate you fully. Uh, we understand that this is kind of just a very quick overview and a very quick snapshot of what is going on in the marketplace for scale computing. Um, we have worked closely with them for more than a couple of years now, I believe, and, uh, and we're seeing success across the board, just exactly what he's talking about in his presentation. So if you would like to book that kind of an appointment with us, uh, certainly give me an email, uh, shoot me a quick email, and we'll be glad to do that with you. And uh, we'll set up some time so that you can fully understand and appreciate what it is that they're offering to you. Likewise, with uh, our other two panelists as well, uh, we are more than glad to always set up those kind of appointments and have a further deep dive if needed, okay? So without further ado, um, if there's any questions at all, uh, I'm just looking at the chat here, I didn't see anything, um, or the Q&A. So just give everybody a quick moment here. If you, if you do have a question, we'll be glad to answer that for you. If not, we will uh, bring in our final panelist. Okay, it looks like we're good for now. So uh, our last presentation is gonna be done by Turnium. Uh, we have Nikki Kearns on the line here with us and uh, Nikki, I will let you take it from here. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I'm very pleased to be here and I'm going to take you on a little history lesson first about the history of business telephony uh, and you'll see why it's relevant as we go through. So life started in the world of business telephony with the, the switchboard back when things were analog and Wires had to be plugged into other sockets to connect phones to other phones and so on. It was very manual. But then um, in the 70s, we evolved into, if you click to the next um, picture here, we evolved into what we knew as a PBX, a PABX, uh, with the advent of electronics and transistors and so on. We developed an electronic way of connecting everything to each other. But this still was a big piece of iron that was sitting inside a wiring closet in every location you had and every phone had to be connected to it through its own dedicated wiring and so on. But then the, the big revolution came in my lifetime when I was a Cisco employee, I lived through this, uh, the evolution of the IPPBX or the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the calls, uh, call manager and the unified communications, all of these ama amazing things. And these things now, they start a life again being using the network, so re, re, reusing the networking that was within a building to provide a, a, a combined data and voice environment. But it evolved then later to being centralized in the, the, the company's 
um, headquarters because the network improved between the sites. But ultimately, everything then simply moved to the cloud. So if we can move to the next slide. So now uh, you had a voice contact centers, all of these applications all in the cloud. Everyone is distributed around the world in different offices working from home, et cetera, especially more recently. But the one common thing that enabled all of this, if you can click to the next one, was the ability to have network in the middle of this. Network, this does not work without network. Sometimes I tell the story about how we moved from, uh, from uh, Sony Walkmans all the way through to uh, Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, and nothing happens without the network. So if we can click onto the next slide, uh, Turium is a, an organization we're very happy to be partnered with Attaché. Turium is an all-Canadian company based out of Vancouver, and uh, we're we're now really making the the limelight at the moment. We've just recently announced that we've been the chosen vendor for IBM's Telco Cloud globally. So this is a, a significant change to the way networking is done in the world as we go through. This is about taking everything that Tina and Jacob talked about the, the compute, the, the users, the distribution of compute and storage and, um, and making it this hybrid network and making it easy for everyone to do and to be able to provide it anywhere. So uh, if you click onto the next slide, please. So the, the key components as we've talked about through these sessions today are, you know, first of all, you have the, the kind of classic components of storage and compute, and also where those things are located. You have cloud and edge compute, cloud and edge storage, and then you have the users, you know, from the, the Sharp team, we learned about the, the, the endpoints, the edge compute and the cloud compute that, uh, that Jacob and the, the team at, uh, that, at uh, Scale Computing have discussed. And these are all the kind of trends in the industry, uh, but the, the common glue and the kind of, the anchor tenant, if you like, if you click to the next uh, animation, is the network component again. None of this is possible without network in, in under, underpinning everything. Now, if you click onto the next slide, the biggest problem with networking, and this is, I, I'm borrowing a lot of the story that Jacob talked about in scale, because um, one of the challenges that IT departments have today is the complexity of things. And networking is no different. Networking is actually compounding because people coming into the industry, the last thing they want to do is networking. They want to do all the cool stuff. They want to do the applications. They don't want to do the cloud applications. And there's, suddenly it's getting harder and harder to find people with networking experience. And it's, it's, cost, and it's taking more and more time to build them because trying to do this cloud edge model with traditional legacy technology is becoming more and more complex, especially when you're trying to do security in the cloud, those kind of things. So it's imperative that we simplify the networking. So you need less resources to manage this kind of stuff. But while at the same time, maintaining that security and privacy, that is so essential today, especially when things become more distributed and also ensuring things work. So you could talk about reliability in the terms of security as well, but things have to be simple and effective and providing the productivity and performance that you need in the network. So these are top of mind issues when you ever consider about how to make that network perform so that all of the other applications and the business can operate using an effective network. So if you go to the next slide, please. So the top of mind issues that I, I, I listened to a recent CFO talking about it, and you think about CFOs, they, they concern themselves with costs, but they want, they want effectiveness, effectiveness of capital expenditure. And they also are the ones who are on the hook if anything is ever jeopardized, because it costs money for security to, if security breaches happen in the company. So these are things that keep them awake. The, the, the operating side of the house, they want to be efficient. They want to get the most out of the resources that they've already got. And they, they don't want headaches. They want things just to work. So they want simplicity, efficiency, and so on. And the CIO, the, 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 the IT director and so on, they are tasked with providing the tools to help the business work to be effective. And the problem they have is with traditional approaches, everything takes time. So it has to be agile, so things have to be fast and quick. So if you move to the next slide. So with Turnium, we've taken a very different approach to things. As I say, I'm a Cisco veteran. I, I know the old legacy world of networking very, very well. I lived through it and I understand all the different 
foibles of, and I also understand how complex things have become in that space. So instead of thinking of network as something you have to build yourself and understand and do all the components, Jeremy's taking the approach of making it into a service, like a utility. It should be as simple as turning on a tap for water or plugging in for electricity. You shouldn't have to think about it at all. It should just be pervasive and it should be everywhere. So this, so our solution is based on software, which for example, blends really nicely with scale computing because we can turn on our components on a scale computing platform very easily because it's just, it's just another virtual machine that sits inside the scale environment, for example. We show some examples of that shortly. Um, but the other thing is about making the most of what you have and making sure that your network is reliable because now your dependency in network is much higher. So you need to make sure it's effective, it just works, and it's secure. So these, these components are essential. These are things that we bring in spades to the story because of our software approach to this. And lastly is giving you, the customer, the visibility and control over your network as much or as little as you want. Because just like the, the, the water or the electricity, how much you care, as long as it's working, you don't care. But you may want to see what's going on. You may want to see your, your usage and so on. So we give you the control, but you can use it as much or as little as you want. So this is a service you plug into and it just works. So on to the next slide. We'll talk about a, a very simple example, which is really kind of the one of the real jewels in the crown of our solution. It's how we do that reliability part and security part. Because in a very simple environment, we have one location that requires connectivity to the internet, to cloud services, to everything that's out there that's essential, all of the stuff we talked about before. Our device basically aggregates all of the existing connections you have at that site. And we do a packet-based distribution between the different services. And basically your network thinks there's only one connection present. There's no redundancy failing over, latency, flapping links. We, we mask that entirely. Your IP address always stays the same. It's completely stable and there's no downtime when when links come and go inside the, uh, the environment. So your network has now become more effective, higher performing because you're using all the bandwidth available to you. And it's also much more reliable because you don't even notice anything going on in the network if there's packet loss or, or kind of reduced throughput or latency jitter issues. We, we cover all that over so you don't have to deal with them. So this is part of the service. So, uh, and then with an end-to-end -end quality of service, we protect all your key applications and so on. So what does this look like when we have multiple locations? So if you skip to the next slide. So in multiple locations, we take that same branch concept and extend it anywhere you want and create a private network between all of your locations. Now think about this in terms of scale computing. If you have a scale computing platform at each one of those locations, you can just run our software or we can put our software onto that scale computing platform. And now you have private, reliable, secure network between all your locations over any access technology in any environment. And this can be extended to the cloud because providing security in the cloud, multi-cloud applications, most customers, even small customers are more than one cloud provider. Providing that security to those locations is as simple as standing up a virtual edge device of ours inside your cloud provider. And then everything inside the cloud is now inside your private network, secure and reliable as we said before. So if you go to the next slide, We'll take a very simple example here. Municipality can take our technology. Remember, it's a service. This is not a bunch of boxes. You have to take out the box and configure. This comes ready built and you just plug in. We can build the network across any infrastructure and say, take an example of a city. You have many private links, public links, a mixture. It's a big mess. You have to figure out what I'm using here versus there. We create a ubiquitous network over the top making everything the same everywhere as a utility across the city. So this is just one example. So, and lastly, if we go to the last slide, please. Just in conclusion, the, the network is essential to businesses today. And the problem with network is that it's complex. It's hard to find the resources to manage it. When you do have the resources, you'd rather they be doing something else than having to manage all these Cisco devices and switches and routers and so on. So it, the ability to simplify your environment and use what you already have in terms of your connectivity is, is, is key to success. And also just providing the simplicity and reliability while maintaining the security is what's going to enable 
the cloud compute, edge compute, user desktop environments that we've already heard about today. So this is why the Turnium solution is absolutely revolutionary in changing the way companies are building networks today. We're very proud to be partnered with Attaché because they know how to tell our story and weave it into a complete solution for you, the customer, so that you basically get your problem solved and you, you drive towards a simpler, easier to live in world. So thank you. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks so much for that, Nikki. Um, just want to touch on one thing with that. Uh, I, part of my job, I, I get to have the pleasure of sitting in the background and being able to watch a lot of these demos and seeing them done. Um, and there was one in particular that Nikki did for a client of ours last week. Uh, was it Nick or two, two weeks, weeks ago? ago yeah. Two weeks ago, yeah. Um, and it was just phenomenal to be able to see this technology at work. Uh, Nikki was over visiting family in Ireland, as you may have noticed. He has a little bit of an accent. Um, and while he was over there, um, he still, you know, true to his word, uh, did a demo for us for one of our clients. And what he did was uh, he poured it into his setup that he has at his uh, abode in, in Vancouver and uh, was able to run the whole demo by failing off uh, two separate uh, Bell circuits, or was it TELUS? TELUS, yeah. TELUS, yeah, two, two TELUS fiber circuits and then uh, switch it over fully onto an LTE. So, uh, and, and not once did we lose any, any packets. I think it was like maybe 30, 35 packets or something along that uh, line. 15,000 or something, yeah. Yeah, it was like so small, yeah. Yeah. so small. So it, we kept video the whole time and it was just remarkable to be able to, to watch this in, in live. So if you do get a chance uh, to reach out and I promise you, you will not be disappointed with any of the demos that go on here, but this one is, is kind of a fun one to, to be able to watch for sure. Um, just want to check to see if anybody had any questions and uh, while we're looking for those kind of questions to come up, I will uh, exit out of this area here and I'll stop sharing my screen. And what I will do is since we've got everybody up here right now, um, I will pull up the list of people that we have, participants. Okay, so uh, just so everybody knows, they will be receiving a $20 uh, gift card for uh, Uber Eats. So we will make sure that we send that out to you via your email that you had given to us. And in addition to that though, we do have some pretty, pretty cool prizes that we're going to be offering. Uh, so what we will have um, is uh, I'm gonna have Tina, if you wouldn't mind picking a number between one and 12, please. Let's go with 10. Number 10. All right. So Sanjo, I hope I'm pronouncing that, or Sano, sorry, my apologies. Uh, you will be receiving a $50 Amazon gift card. And we'll do the same thing with uh, Nikki. If you could give me a number between one and 11, please. I can't pick 10, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with seven. Seven? Yeah. All right. So for number seven, we have Dave Speedy. And Dave, you will be receiving a $50 Amazon gift card as well. And if you could pick a number between one and 10, Jacob, they will be receiving a prize pack from us, which will include a golf shirt. Ooh. What, uh, what numbers were picked again? 10 and... Oh, you can go any, any number between one and 10. I'm, I'm narrowing it down. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's do three. Number three. All right. So Brent Fletcher. You will be receiving the attache prize pack. I know we make it sound so special, right? Yeah, big round of applause for that one. Um, okay, and this is for a hundred dollar gift card for Amazon. And uh, Tina, we'll bring it back to you if you could pick a number between one and six, please. Or sorry, one and one and nine. 
Let's go five. Five. All right. So we have Carrie Brewer from uh, Cheshire. You will be receiving a $100 gift card for Amazon. And finally, for the grand prize, uh, which is a, scale, a, a sorry, a sharp uh, air purifier with HEPA filter built into it. Um, if you could pick a number, Jacob, I'll let you do this one. Uh, and this would be a number between one and eight, please. Chris, are you on here? You wanna, you wanna give that one? Go three. Number three. Ah, two threes. <laughs> All right. So for number three, we have Mitchell Monjion. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Mitchell, congratulations. You got that one. And we will uh, we'll find out how we can get that out to you, Mitchell. That is uh, something that is sitting at our office. Uh, so we will make sure that we get that uh, sent out to you in some way, shape or form. Well, thank you again, everybody. We want to be respective of your time. We, we, we said we would definitely wrap things up around one o'clock for you. Uh, it looks like we're basically right on uh, schedule for that to happen. But I do want to give everybody one last chance. If you had any questions that you wanted to throw out there to any of the panelists, uh, we would love to be able to answer any of those kind of questions for you. And uh, I'll just leave that open for a few moments there. I guess I, I have one that's uh, what are the winners going to do with all of that money? <laughs> uh, just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah. Hope you all have fun. It's been a lot of fun being here with everybody. Good to see you guys. Eh? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Jeremy. Oh, it's my pleasure guys. This is always fun to do. I love doing this kind of thing, especially if we get an opportunity to be able to get in front of so many great people. Absolutely. Well, listen, we will wrap things up again. Big hearty thank you from all of us at Attaché and certainly from our partners here at Sharp Canada, Scale Computing and Turnium. We want to wish you the best of health and certainly continued success throughout the rest of this season. Thanks so much, guys. Take good care. All the best. Thanks, everyone.